Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to build a powerful automation inside Google Sheets that enables you to automatically create and send invoices. And we're going to do this using AppScript. Before we look at the code, let's understand the process. So here I've got a Google Sheet with some customer data and some items I need to invoice to our customers. In our script, we're going to go through each row and get all this information such as the client name, client email, invoice number, and so on. Then our script is going to grab a copy of this template. It will make a fresh copy, give it a unique name, but it will also take that client data from our Google Sheet and replace all of these values for us. And then it converts the finished Google Doc into a PDF, files it away in our Google Drive, and also attaches it to an email to our customer for us. And then finally, back in our Google Sheets over on the right hand side here, it's going to update these columns, letting us know that it sent the emails and also add a link to the invoice into our Google Sheet for us. So that's what's going to happen. Let's now look at the code. So our first function here is running on open. And the purpose of this is to simply add a menu option in Google Sheets to make it easy for us to run this script. Next up, we've got the first of our helper functions. This one is called copy document. And the purpose of this function is to take a copy of our template, it names it, and then it puts it into the correct folder. This function takes several parameters, the source doc ID, so our template, what we want to call the new document, and the folder we want to place that in. So as you can see here, we're getting the source document, we're getting details about the folder, then we're using the make copy method, providing it the copy name and the folder ID. And then lastly, it returns the new ID of that new copied document. And we'll need that ID a little later on. The next of our helper functions is this one, and it's called replace placeholder. This function takes two parameters, the doc ID and the replacements. And as you probably guessed, this function acts a bit like an automated find and replace. It opens that new document, gets the contents of that document using the getBody method, and then it scans through all of those replacements using a for loop, and those placeholders are replaced using the values from our Google Sheet. And lastly, it just saves and closes that document. Okay, now let's move on to the main function, which is doing all of the hard work. It uses our helper functions to get the job done for every row, so let's now have a closer look at this one. So first of all, we are getting the active spreadsheet and within that spreadsheet, we're looking for sheet one. And then we need to get all of the data from that sheet. So this is a clever way to do that. It puts the header row, the top row into the head variable. And then we're using spread syntax to put all of the other data into the data variable. Next up, we need to define the template document. So the source document ID. So this is the document ID I've added into here. And then we need to add the folder ID, and this is the destination folder where we want to save all of our invoices in. And then for that folder ID, we're opening it by the ID here to get the actual folder object from Google Drive. Next, we then need to find the column numbers of both the status column and link column, so we can update that spreadsheet later on. And this is the heart of a script. It says that for each row, we're going to do the following. So firstly, we calculate the current row of data. So to do that, we're using this incrementer here, defined as the I variable, and we're adding two to that. That accounts for the missing header row in our data and the difference in how AppScript uh, with spreadsheets and JavaScript count uh, numbers. This section here is our safety check. So if the current status is true, then we're going to exit out of this part of the script because we don't want to send invoices to customers who have already received that. Next up, we're just pulling in some data which we need to use later in creating the emails. So here we're getting the invoice name, the invoice number, the client email and client name. And to get this data, what we're doing here, just to explain this section, so we're using our row variable, and for that row, 
We're looking up in the head variable to find the column number matching invoice number heading. So that will then return the first column and give us that part of the data and assign it to the invoice number variable. If you want a more detailed description of how this works, then check out the video which should be popping up now on your screen where I go into this in a lot more detail. Then down here, we call our first helper function to make a copy of that template and we're providing it with the source doc ID, copy name and folder ID. Next up, we're building the replacements object. This has got a list of all of the placeholders in the document and what we want to replace those with using that data from our spreadsheet. And further down here, we're calling our second helper function, which is going to go through all of those placeholders in the new document with the values from the object above. And as you can see here, we're providing it the new doc ID and those replacements. Now that we've created that new document, we need to make a PDF from this. So the first thing we're going to do is retrieve that document object using drive app, then the get file by ID method and providing it the new doc variable. And then we're defining a new variable here where we're actually going to make that PDF. So here we're selecting the destination folder using the create file method and we're turning it to convert our new doc file, turn it into a PDF and give it a new name. And last of all down here, this is where we handle sending the email. So as you can see here, we're defining our subject and we're pulling in the invoice number. Then we're defining the contents of the message body and we're personalizing this message by including the client name and invoice number within the message. And then we're using Gmail app to send the email. And we're doing that with the send email method, providing it the client email, subject and the email body were defined up here along with our attachments using our PDF file variable. And then once that email has been sent, we're then updating our spreadsheet with the date the email was sent on. And we're also writing back the link to the PDF invoice that was generated. And last of all, we're just sending a message back to the spreadsheet to let us know that the function has finished running. Okay, so that was the script. Let's now try running this and see how it all comes together. So over on the top right here, I've got my mail merge menu option. Let's select run mail merge. The script is now running and has updated the status column and is including a link to our document as well. Let's just scroll over here and have a better look. So if I hover over this link, I can see the invoice. If I select this, let's open up that invoice. And as you can see, it's replaced all of those placeholders with the data from my spreadsheet. And now I've moved into the destination folder. And as you can see, we've got a Google Doc and PDF for each row in our spreadsheet. And all of these emails have been sent into my sent folder as well. So if I go into uh, this most recent message, we've got our customized message body here, along with our invoice attached as well. And there you have it. With this script set up, your entire invoicing process is reduced to a single click. You can find the full code ready to copy and paste in the description below. Feel free to adjust and improve it so it fits your needs. And this script isn't just useful for invoices. You could use it to send letters or any other data which you need to mail merge. If this tutorial helped you, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe for more Google Workspace automation tips, and let me know in the comments what you'd like to automate next. Thanks for watching.